Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Captain Disaster and the Two Worlds of Riscara. This is a brand new upcoming adventure game set in the Captain Disaster universe. I've not actually played the other Captain Disaster games yet, so I'm very intrigued to see what this is all about. It's um, space themed, as you can probably tell and i'm really looking forward to it it looks really cool so we're going to jump into the demo we're going to give it a play we're going to see what happens the animation and everything looks great so i'm very excited for this there's i'm guessing our spaceship but we shall see i believe it's like a, a comedic adventure game as well We go. Uh, this is very Monkey Island, isn't it? Somewhere in the Caribbean. I like the the very similar Monkey Island music. Oh, oh it had to click. Okay, sorry. Maybe just maybe even deep in the Caribbean, but definitely somewhere in it. Ah, this is the life. Sun, sea, sand, cocktails, and bikini-clad babes. All I see is a ball, a bit like Wilson. Although we are a little lacking in babes. And cocktails. Guess I'd better speak to the bartender. Who happens to be a blue volleyball for some reason. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen the film Cast Away, that, that is what that's from. If you move the mouse cursor over something or someone you can interact with, the cursor will change to allow you to either look, pick up, use, or talk with that thing person. And also change when you're over an exit point. Uh, sometimes the available option will change after the first use. For instance, you can look at something and after having done that, you may be able to interact with it. Okay, cool. So, uh, we've got Wilson here. <coughs> it's an anthropomorphic blue volleyball called Wilson. Perfectly normal and hopefully not in copyright violation. <laughs> now that I've looked at him, maybe I should try talking to him. Good idea. Grog me, barkeep. Sir, I'm not a barkeep, nor do we serve grog. I'm a tiki attendant and we serve exotic cocktails. What cocktails do you have? We have the following selection, sir. Venusian Sunrise, or Venusian? I'm not sure how you say that, actually. Wookie's Delight, sounds quite cool. Cosmic Headbanger, Mimbari Meditation Maker, Valerian Surprise, Andromedan Blastazoid. Oh god, okay, uh, let's go for a Wookie's Delight. Unfortunately, the Roshia sap for this has dried out too much for me to make this particular cocktail. Since the drink derives almost all of its flavour and alcohol content from the Roshia sap, there is no point trying to make it. Okay, of the uh, Venusian Sunrise. Sadly, we're out of the key ingredient of Venusian turtle juice. Actually, that doesn't sound like something I'd want anyway. No, it doesn't. Uh, do you have any of these drinks, Wilson? I'll have a cosmic headbanger. Actually, I'd forgotten that this drink is now banned across the galaxy. Something to do with it actually causing heads to explode in certain species. And then Bari Meditation Maker? I don't know how to put this delicately, sir, but... Well... You need to have a certain mental capacity to appreciate this drink. Oh, come on! A mental capacity I'm afraid that you don't have, sir. I've never heard of such a thing. That, sir, is part of the problem. I have a Valyrian su surprise, then. The real surprise about this drink is that it doesn't exist. Come on. <laughs> then what's the point? It's extremely easy to make and costs no money. So I suppose that's true. That does have merit. Can I have one of those? But how do you know you haven't already? In fact, I think you've had quite enough of those. <laughs> I see. I'll have an Andromedan Blastazoid. Let me guess, he doesn't have that either. I'm afraid last time I tried to make one of those, it created a mini wormhole. I'm too scared to try making another one in case I inadvertently cause a serious breach in the space-time continuum. Where are the real cocktail pioneers these days, Wilson? I suspect their remains are scattered across the galaxy, sir. Well, what can I have? I can offer you a pina colada. <laughs> okay, fine, I like pina, pina coladas. <laughs> really? I never knew. Off he goes. So I guess Wilson is actually real, unless we're dreaming this or something. Nice. Okay, what's the idea of not putting the umbrella in my class? Look, I'm an anthropomorphized volleyball. 
Cocktails I can make. Putting little tiny umbrellas into the glass as well. I mean, come on man, be reasonable. You can do it for yourself. It may even help the uninitiate, uninitiated to practice combining inventory items. What was that? Nothing. I said nothing. Also, I have nothing more to say, so don't try to talk to me again. <laughs> Why did you do the evil laugh? I don't know, really. It was fun, though. Okay, to access the inventory, top of the screen. Left click or examine it by right clicking. Okay, yeah. It's pretty, pretty standard adventure game stuff. By combining the cocktail and umbrella together, I have made a cocktail with an umbrella in it. Amazing. Oh. Wow. Now that's more like it. Wilson turned into a bikini-clad lady. Ah, VR. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Ah, another total immersion video game bites the dust. Which one this time? Beach of Ultimate Tranquility? Yeah, that's the one. Better than life indeed. These things always go up in smoke just when they're starting to get good. Oh, we're travelling through open space, not a care in the world. Not a single bloodthirsty space pirate in sight, just us and the stars, right? You can say that again. We've had quite enough adventures for one lifetime. Ah, something tells you that's about to change. Is he bored? I'm guessing he's bored about adventures, right? Is, is, is he following the, the cursor? I'm bored. No, okay, he's not. For a minute, I thought he might have been following the cursor. That was really weird. Well, this might help alleviate your boredom. We're picking up a distress signal from an unidentified craft. Oh, I like the transition screen, that's cool. It doesn't look too damaged. <laughs> it, well, okay, now it looks quite damaged. <laughs> a fuel tank ruptured from the cumulative effect of damaged parts. It's taken a lot of damage, seemingly from two separate events, an asteroid collision and a space battle of some sort. Whatever happened to this ship, there's not much of it left intact. Any sign of the ship or ships that attacked it? Nope, looks like a smash and grab. There are signs that some precious radioactive isotopes have been removed. I can detect their isotopic signatures. Or that could be some particularly rancid Gorgonzola, it's hard to tell. <laughs> Is the distress signal just an automatic relay that hasn't switched off? It may be, but there do appear to be life signs on the ship. It's a little hard to be sure with all the debris interfering with the scanners. Also, the scanners were sold by Trotter Interplanetary Enterprises. <laughs> it's only fools and horses. They don't have the most trustworthy reputation, although their fighters are popular with despotic empires for some reason. Yeah, Ty, very good. Very good Star Wars reference. Yes, yes, but you're saying there might be people on board who need help. It's possible, maybe even probable. Then I am on a bound to help where I can. Or is it because you're bored? <laughs> well, a bit of both, really. Does our transporter thingy work again? It's less reliable the further out we are, so I'll manoeuvre us close to the area where I detected those possible life signs. That way, there's more chance that you won't turn into a potato during transport. Okay, sounds like a plan. Just how likely am I to turn into a potato? I think you have a slightly more than even chance of no potato-related transporter incidents if I get in really close. Those are odds I can live with, just about. <laughs> cool! Looks like we're going on the transporter. Check this out. This is cool. Okay, ready to go. Now don't forget the comms array is still being fixed by the nanobots. Oh, so they finally ended their strike action. Yes, their representatives recommended they go back to work once we acceded to their demands. What were those demands again? I forgot. They wanted a subscription to Holodeck Monthly. That's all. Yes, but it's a pretty expensive periodical, both in terms of credits to buy and data transfer rates. In the end though, we had no choice but to give in, or core ship systems would have stopped working before we could get to a repair centre. Anyway, the important thing is, the only way you can contact me is via a homing beacon. If you meet any life forms that need saving, give them the beacon and tell them to press it. The beacon self-replicates upon use, so you will always retain a copy, just in case. That's quite cool. In case what? In case you do what you normally do, and make a complete mess of things. <laughs> that, to be, is absolutely scandalous. Really? You remember that time when... Okay, no need to recount specific calamities that I may possibly have been slightly responsible for. Just get on with it. Initialising sequence. <clears throat> ah, 
That's quite cool. Oh no! <coughs> oh no, we're good. Okay, I thought we turned into a potato. <laughs> I really have to get that fixed sometime. Okay, we're on a very disgusting looking ship. Hmm, no life signs and lots of broken stuff. Nice going, Tubi. There was method behind my choice to set you down here. This is the edge of the life support system's integrity zone. I thought you wouldn't want to land right where there are life form signs just in case. After all, we have no idea what sort of life forms they might be or how friendly they are. Hmm, you do have a point. Thanks, Tubi. Any time, Captain. Alright, it's a chocolate wrapper. Awesome! Alteran chocolate, Alteran chocolate? The best in the galaxy. Oh no. Like everything else in this room, the chocolate is broken. I mean, can we get it? Oh well, I'll take it anyway. You never know. And chocolate is chocolate after all. Nice. Okay. There's a lot of broken crap in here. Super Deluxe Hand Phaser. The ultimate in hand phaser technology. It can even melt ice cubes. As with almost everything here, sadly it's utterly broken. <coughs> Alright, we can't take that. Hexacorder. It's a hexacorder, twice as good as a tri recorder. <laughs> or one and a half times as good as my old quad corder. Pity it's broken, it would have come in very handy. Especially the electromagnetic corkscrew function. <laughs> right, it doesn't look like we can actually take that. Right, we've got a machine here which is still working. Gives me the creeps. Yeah, that is kind of creepy. Uh, we can't take it. There's a stormtrooper helmet. A stormtrooper helmet. It's the only thing in this pile that isn't broken. The team creating it was so useless they even managed to spell helmet wrong. The error was only realised after 300 million units had already been shipped, so they stuck with it. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, can we... Unfortunately, despite being unbroken, the stormtrooper helmet is completely useless. I once tried one on and could barely see anything through the visor. <laughs> the story and the comedy is really good in this, by the way, already. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's a towel. Everyone knows that a towel is just about the most massively useful thing an interstellar hitchhiker can carry. Unfortunately, this one is ruined. I don't know what some of the stains are on it, and I have no desire to find out. Also, since I have my own ship, I'm not an interstellar hitchhiker. <laughs> True. Boot. Is that a... No, it can't be. Can it? A boot of stomping? <laughs> ah, no. It is but a humble anti-gravity boot. Which would be awesome, but alas, it is no longer in working order. Right, there's no nothing useful here. Groovy monitor thing. I have no idea what it's monitoring, but it's doing a good job of it. Well done, monitor. Keep doing a good job, yeah? Um, Alright, I guess we head through the door. Oh my god. A grand knight of the realm rode in upon his spacecraft to save those in peril, and verily they were thankful and gave unto him hearts most full of gratitude. Oh good, someone set us free. Hopefully not a complete loser. <laughs> what are these? What are these? Well, howdy, a customer. I mean, uh, a saviour. Why, hello, my good chap. I am so pleased to see you. I do hope you have come to rescue us, akin to the saving of the Truskesians of Thrand by Galopidus of Method. Danica? <laughs> My god. Well, wow, they're an interesting bunch. Okay, can we... I mean, we can look at these guys. Okay, I mean, do we want to save them? <laughs> do we want to continue on for now? There's the control room down here. This sign very helpfully tells me that if I keep moving to the left, I'll end up in the control room. So, I mean, we could go to the control room. Or we could talk to some of these guys. The alien is dressed like someone who does meta work or something. Sporting an impressive moustache. That is quite a cool moustache. We can talk to him. <clears throat> an alien that looks a little like an upright slug. A very well presented and intelligent looking upright slug, admittedly. The very embodiment of Teen Rebellion. <laughs> Slug-like Teen Rebellion. This creature seems to look permanently astonished. Must be pretty exhausting to look surprised all the time. This looks like it's sparking. The damage taken by the ship has caused this, power, uh, this control panel to lose connection to the power grid. If I can find a power cell, I should be able to reactivate the panel. Okay. Uh, we've got a homing beacon. What about this one? This control panel is functioning but needs a key card to activate. There is no other way to deactivate the force field. Okay. So, I mean, we can need a security card. I just wanted to see what would happen if we actually pressed it. Control panels. Look at all this. Display panel up here. Flashing lights and stuff. Lots of flashing lights and stuff. 
I have no idea what any of it means. Right, so control console is a fan. This fan is trying to keep the component above from overheating. Uh, looks like it might be failing. I'm not sure what this is, but there's a fan going absolutely crazy trying to keep it cool. Okay, and there's a doorway here. What's through this way? Oh my god, what is that? A giant space fly. What was that? I was so startled that I didn't get a proper look at it. Uh, can we grab that bar? A small thin metal bar. I guess it must be from one of those broken cages. Alright, I guess it could be useful. Well, let's take that. Uh, there's all sorts of food here. Bug alien. Oh, it's a key or something. Oh, it's a key card. I've seen lots of different aliens before, but never this type. I have no idea what it is. Maybe I can look it up on the control console. <coughs> okay, we can do that. Console seems to take a massive damage internally. Hardly any of it is functional. I can just make out how to access parts of the cargo manifest, but that's all. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. There are no images intact in the database, so I need to find the bug alien's name to find anything useful in the cargo manifest. Alright, maybe these guys can help us out with this. It's possible, right? But, guys, I tell you what, we are out of time, and I want you guys to go and download this and play it for yourself, because it's really good. I'm going to play the rest of this off-camera, so I've played the whole thing. But yeah, really enjoying this. The story's brilliant, the artwork's really cool, the comedy is absolutely on point. This seems like it's going to be a really good game, so I'm going to keep a close eye on this one. So, down in the description below, go and play it for yourself, download it, it's on Steam, and uh, I don't know if it's on itch.io as well, but definitely Steam. So... Big thank you for watching, a big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Burial Jachobo, and Numinous, and I'll see you next time.